Well, good afternoon. Uh, wrapping it up here, so hopefully I'll be brief uh, in my comments. My name is Will Bowser, and uh, my project was dealing with a uh, analysis of a policy development around social media and Oregon's fire service. And really, when we start thinking about the the so what, there we go. Uh, the so what uh, of my uh, project really centered around uh, some driving forces in social media. My peers were very interested when I uh, brought this up. In fact, uh, the Oregon Fire Chiefs were very instrumental in, in supporting me in my effort here uh, uh, around this. In fact, they're, they're waiting for other uh, outcomes uh, as we uh, speak today. So uh, a lot of it centers around the fact that a lot of agencies are using social media and have adopted its, its use, especially amongst our public information officers and our fire prevention folks. They're, they're dramatically utilizing this means to engage the public in fire prevention efforts. Uh, in fact, if you start Googling in, in different departments, most fire departments have some sort of Facebook page or, or video out, out on YouTube. In fact, our fire department uh, had a little issue a while back because one of our lieutenants who was in charge of our uh, recruit training for our volunteers put together a great video and posted on YouTube and none of us managers all of a sudden got these uh, emails going, hey, did you see this YouTube video? And we're like, huh? What YouTube video? And we're all looking at it and we're kind of going, well, I like it, but uh, there's a few things that we really didn't uh, uh, necessarily support. Uh, the other thing is the fact that uh, in the fire service right now, uh, especially with a lot of changes in furs and things of that nature, we have actually a relatively aging workforce uh, and as that replaces, and in fact our own department, we will have literally 50% of our department will turn over in the next five years. And of that uh, workforce, the majority of them are between the ages of 18 and 24 years of age. And they are <coughs> the ones, as, as uh, Kathy mentioned earlier, they're the ones who are really ingrained in the whole social media and uh, efforts around uh, tweeting and Facebook, and, uh, et cetera. The last thing uh, is the public at large. Uh, at least within the city of Corvallis, we have a, a very much a, a uh, socially engaged community, and they are looking at different ways to engage us as public servants. Well, with that engagement and with all these other factors behind this effort, uh, we also have to try to maintain not only our mission, vision, values of our organization, but as you mentioned about earlier, and that is the public trust. And unfortunately, there's been a, several events uh, uh, in the media lately. In fact, uh, there was one, I think, just the other day regarding some congressional leadership <laughs> about tweets and, and texting. Um, but even in our own uh, context in the first place, we had one event uh, that, that uh, rippled through the uh, profession quite uh, significantly recently, and that was a video uh, uh, taken with a cell phone in Georgia of a fatal accident. Um, and just to give you a quick little background, this accident, uh, there's three forms of communication we affectionately talk about in the fire service. Telephone, telegraph, and telefireman. Okay, well this firefighter texted this video to another firefighter, who in turn went to a local bar, started uh, sharing the information with local patrons, and lo and behold, after about three or four months, this video made it back to the parent of the decedent. Not a good way to build trust. So the whole point of, of social media and the importance of it, uh, I think, goes without saying. So when I looked at the objective of this, this being quite broad and, and diverse, we uh, really tried to focus on, well, what are the things, what are the attributes that are important uh, to the development of a social media policy? And I came into this effort kind of with one assumption, that is most of us really don't have social media policies within Oregon's fire service. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. But around it, as I started looking at trying to conceptualize this, uh, we focused on trying to focus uh, on Berkland's kind of policy environment and then kind of modeling this around uh, what we have for existing uh, perceptions and or policies that, that are out there, running it kind of through a content analysis and they're really coming up with some recommendation and elements that are important to this. 
But as we uh, focused in then on the literature research, I found re yeah, excuse me, really three distinctive areas. One was that there's a lot of uh, general information out there on social media. In fact, uh, you can get overwhelmed very quickly about the general utilization of it, uh, the privacy security issues, cost benefit. When you start looking at the, the private industry, they've done a lot of study and work on cost benefit analysis around social media and how it improves their, their outcomes, and then the management of it. The other piece centered around the how-to documents. There's a lot of how-to out there uh, and a lot of different opinions. But the, uh, the problem with that is how do you conceptualize it to the fire service or to a specific industry? And so uh, with that, I focused then on the policy analysis literature and then how that might kind of crosswalk in parallel. Uh, in other words, how do, how, do, uh, how do I conduct an analysis? How might we conduct analysis for our particular organizations decision making and then try to uh, operationalize it. So this is just kind of an outline from Berkland's uh, text. In fact, I think we all saw this in Dr. Shin's class on policy development. And really, it centers around kind of the, poli the, the political environment kind of influences both structural, economic, and, and social uh, aspects of policy development, but then they kind of, those in turn impact the uh, political. So, what I did is focus in on Oregon's fire service. Obviously, with kind of a limited amount of time, trying to do a nationwide search or nationwide uh, effort here was kind of beyond the scope. So I focused strictly on the 317 fire departments found in Oregon and maintained by the Oregon Fire Marshal's Office. And, and uh, this, this list is updated every year. Uh, in fact, the list that I used was from March of 2011, this last March. So it's a very current list. But what I found is as I started going through that list, my target was about 100 surveyed uh, to be able to distribute to get at least a decent sample size back. But what I found is of the 317 fire departments, only 82 had some sort of electronic contact information. And that's even some sort of web page, some sort of email contact to be able to get the information out. So it kind of that alone is, it, it, I think, illustrative of kind of a, a gap that we have. Of that, we distributed some survey information uh, and then coded it back to uh, kind of the, our uh, contextual uh, model that I had. And I'll show you just kind of how we did that in just a second. And then we looked at policies uh, that were in existence. And unfortunately, uh, of the responses, and I had a reasonable response, about a third of the surveys that went out came back. Um, and of those, uh, as you'll see in a second, I was a little surprised. I had a, a disproportionate number said that they had social media policy, uh, but only received basically three policies to do the analysis. So unfortunately, that portion of uh, the project kind of was a little weak and unfortunately didn't yield the results I was hoping for. <coughs> so within each uh, portion uh, or context of this, we had to try to define it and operationalize it. So using just kind of different questions uh, through all four of uh, the structural influences, the political influences, uh, the economic and then the social influences and content, um, really try to look at not only the survey results, but the, the policies themselves and just seeing uh, how they might work. So this is the thing uh, that I was really surprised with. Other respondents, I had about half or just under half said that they had a policy, yet they didn't provide a policy. <laughs> so it's like, gee. Um, so with that, I kind of actually uh, dove into it a little bit thick, uh, Thicker, when you looked at uh, a couple other questions, one was, do you have a computer use policy and do you have a cell phone policy? The majority of those that actually answered yes to this had those policies. So more than likely, the inference here is that they've addressed the social media aspects in these other policies. But as you'll see, as you start putting this together, that may not necessarily be the best way to address it. When we start looking at uh, awareness and uh, comfort around social media, we also found some interesting things. The fact that the fire chiefs say that they're very comfortable and very aware of social media is kind of interesting because the majority of the fire chiefs are the ones that really are not overly enthusiastic about its use. Uh, so it kind of starts out, uh, you start asking other, kind of other questions and finding out how this might come together. Um, when you also look at this in the sense of the uh, uh, general comfort level, it's funny to see that uh, the fire chief's perception of comfort level amongst their subordinates 
is inversely uh, expected. In other words, the, the, the younger population we have, fire chiefs say, well, they're really not aware of social media use. And I, in talking with some follow-up interviews with my peers, the majority of them uh, said, that, well, they're not really aware of the implications. They like its use, but they really don't know what the problems are. And again, I think that's indicative of the need uh, for one of the recommendations I had. When we start looking at the uh, uh, barriers to, thank you, the barriers to the whole aspect of it, a lot of these start centering around uh, uh, constitutive issues, legal mandates, uh, issues related to economics or resources. And so when we start putting all this together, uh, it starts to inform kind of the recommendations at the end. One of the things I've found interesting here in Oregon, the majority of the, the perception is they've not had any negative consequences like in Georgia, which I suppose uh, is a good thing. Uh, however, uh, what I find also interesting is the fact that we have a fairly substantial number that don't know. And that's also a little concerning. The other piece is that majority of our departments in Oregon, the fire chief is the guy running the show who's also trying to manage social media and others. So again, if they, with regards to their perception and how that plays into not only the structural elements of the organization, but also may uh, uh, influence the political. So when we start looking at kind of findings, uh, what I found is that, quite frankly, the structural policy environment really drove a lot of the policy issues. In, in fact, the majority of fire departments in Oregon provide first response emergency medical services and or transport services. And with regards to the HIPAA, privacy, security issues around that, most of them are extremely nervous about how their use of social media will or will not be impacted by that. And that's really closely followed by the liability concerns. The other uh, social aspect of it is the fact that your workforce is, quite frankly, very much driving the desire to have some sort of uh, social media contact uh, within their organizations. I know for my own agency, our entire um, clinical guidelines, for example, now are electronic because of, not because of my desire, but more uh, at the desire of my workforce, uh, have, wanting to have iPhone apps mm -hmm. uh, uh, issues there. The other thing in the sense of the political issue, a lot of it is very locally driven. This is one that I really couldn't find a good parallel uh, uh, information in the analysis it was very difficult to, to, to target it and then the economics really came down to simply resources uh, resulting from it so as I looked at my recommendations one of it really comes down to is for, for my peers uh, I focus on the need to focus your policy on your mission vision and values of the organization it just needs to kind of go back to that root cause what are you intending to do how do you want to do it and then basically setting the expectations, the desires, and your means of accountability. Thank you. And the bottom, uh, the other question that comes up a lot is, well, can I legally do X? Well, unfortunately, uh, in, in the context of social media, there's not a lot of case law out there driving it. There are HIPAA issues that kind of, uh, in the sense of what kind of uh, photos you should take. Uh, Bureau of Labor and Industries has, has a number of cases complaints going to them, but most of them have been uh, resolved out of, uh, out of, if you will, a legal uh, context. In other words, it has not gone to an administrative law judge yet. Uh, Federal Labor Standards Act in the sense of compensatory time is still kind of nebulous. Um, the other thing is that it really comes down to the literature very much supports the, the, the positive side of social media, especially for the fire service in the sense of prevention and other activities. So it really came down to, you just need to go for it. You, you need to go out and recognize that this is a policy that's going to be a living document. So I use the term Semper Gumby, always flexible. And we have to be always flexible uh, within this policy. So I guess with that, uh, I'll just summarize by thinking, um, you know, uh, Dr. Jones, uh, who's very interested also in this topic, so we've had some very uh, uh, good times at the Turfle Tortoise uh, <laughs> Academy. Uh, and of course, the faculty here, you guys, uh, I can't speak highly enough of the faculty and, and your support, uh, trying to go to work, uh, have a family, uh, and do all those stresses. So uh, we couldn't do it without you all and your flexible and, and mentorship. And of course, Yachi and Davis. Uh, for your advice and counsel over time 
And of course, uh, my fellow board members, uh, you know, uh, being the only fire guy, um, and no, I won't be having to put, you know, I almost put a picture of me in a fireman's poster that was kind of their <laughs> calendar <laughs> photograph, but I decided not to. Um, <laughs> I'm not so sure I look good. But, you know, and I gotta just uh, wrap up by thanking my family. This is, this is the love of my life, and, and the, the folks that really uh, make this happen, and, and so uh, with that, I'll conclude and answer any questions. So.